You know, there's concern about the number of children who are not getting any kind of uh, education in Sheffield. Charities who work with excluded pupils say they're concerned the problem is only going to get worse. Well, Look North has been speaking to two young people who haven't actually been to school for eight months. Now, in a moment, we'll also hear from Sophie Maxwell, whose organisation works with young people like this, and she herself was excluded at a young age. First, Emma Blackburn has this exclusive report. Studying at home when he'd rather be at school. Ibrahim was permanently excluded last May in Year 8 for throwing a can of Coke at a teacher. He should now be well into Year 9, but his family say they haven't had help getting him into another school. And as one of ten children, his home education isn't consistent. But we've not had any communication. No one's visited the family. We've not had any support. So we feel very, very much let down. Um, and just basically my, my brother's been lost in the system. According to Sheffield charity Black Palm, this isn't uncommon. It works with excluded pupils like these teenagers at this youth club and makes sure they get back to school and stay there. But with increasing funding cuts, this type of service is diminishing and Black Palm itself faces closure in March. I'm not even sure about how the welfare service works nowadays because I'm appalled by the amount of people I've come across who are not in school um, and it doesn't appear that they've been picked up by the welfare service as to why they're not in school. Kirsty stopped going to school last May while in year nine, she says because of bullying. Her mum wants her back but hasn't found enough support to get her there. I'm wanting her to go to school because I know it's really important and education for my daughter but there's just no help. What education has Kirsty had since May? No. Absolutely not. We've contacted Sheffield City Council about these cases and they say they had offered a place at another school to Ibrahim and they're investigating Kirsty's case. There is a risk that in a time of reduced resources then more children may um, slip through the, 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 the net but for that reason we're intensifying our efforts and, and my message would be um, you know anybody who is aware of a child who is not in education who should be you know please make contact with us. It's hoped Ibrahim will return to school this month after nearly eight months away. But the worry is that there are many more like him lost from education. Emma Blackburn, BBC Look North, Sheffield. Emma, thank you very much. Joining us now is Sophie Maxwell, herself excluded from school and now running an organisation called the Really Neat College to help children who've got problems with mainstream education. Uh, Sophie, thank you very much for joining us. Tell us briefly your story. How old were you? I was 14 when I became disengaged from school. Um, it was um, quite a traumatic time and I never I never re-engaged in secondary school education again so I missed a fair bit and became quite why, isolated. Why were you excluded? Um, for behavioural issues um, driven by um, difficult home circumstances. Um, so obviously deterioration at home, um, school becomes a difficult place. Now, quite clearly you're intelligent, you run this organisation, you're articulate. You must regret not finishing mainstream education. Um, I could never regret not finishing mainstream education because of the journey it's took me on. Um, I always laugh and joke to people and say my qualification for doing the job I do was my exclusion. Um, but clearly that's not the case for everybody. Um, so. so, OK, you say that it's helped you where you are now, you're helping other children. But presumably your advice to them would not be, hey, it's great to be excluded. excluded. It's going to give them a difficult journey. What would you say to them if they're on the brink? Um, wherever possible, um, mainstream education um, should and hopefully works for young people. But there are cases where mainstream education doesn't work for young people. And in those circumstances, um, small organisations such as mine need to be supporting schools in, in re-engaging them in something um, to get them passionate and believing in that they can achieve in life because they can. It's not just an academic argument, is it? Some people just just feel, I suppose, excluded from life at that particular time. It's incredibly isolating and um, I don't think um, there's a lot of people out there probably aren't aware how isolating it can be when you miss out on your education and actually um, a lot of these young people develop a fear of the classroom so even mentioning to somebody right okay let's get you back in a classroom of 30 young people in mainstream school you know brings brings their heart pumping <laughs> very very quickly so you're 24 you run this organization it's happened to you I'm going to give you all the money you need, all the resources you need, all the support 
from schools. How are you going to solve this? Um, we need to be working in small small colleges such as mine. You know, don't believe in mass organisations solving the problem. Um, small organisations that can make it personal, get to know the kids and really engage them in um, lots of different things to inspire them to do something with their lives. I think you might have just inspired a few people. Thank you very much, Sophie. Thank you. Fascinating.